What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. We're talking about several different topics in this video here again today. We're talking about Halloween ends, we're talking about Saw X, talking about the Black Phone 2, and going on about Friday the 13th, a little theory of mine I have about that upcoming movie that may potentially be coming out safe. So with Halloween ends, James U. Courtney, shout out to you, Halloween Daily News. I'll leave a link to this video in the description. James U. Courtney apparently has made some new comments about Halloween ends at a convention recently. He called it twisted and said it's going to he said it's going to go places you won't expect even though i'm sure some of you listening to this won't be too shocked <laughs> if you have gone out of your way to read any potential plot leaks out there uh but i guess i get his point when it comes to what he's saying and then he says he was one of the only ones to have a fully unredacted script which i'm not too shocked there he also stated the movie goes into some powerful places and jamie lee curtis and himself will share a favorite scene of his in the movie uh, which I assume is going to be this kitchen brawl. But what makes this brawl different than the other Michael and Lori brawls? I think what's going to end up making this different is, of course, going to be these performances that he is talking about. Because we know he even mentioned that they shared a moment together before shooting it where they cried. Now, he could have been talking about a different thing, but I think this might be the kitchen brawl where they both cried together. Um, I think the biggest thing that's going to be different here is the fact that one of them is going to be a clear winner. Lori or Michael Myers will be the clear winner out of this brawl, whereas in the past, you know, it's always kind of been this drawn out thing with the stuff we know what's going to be presented in ends it seems like michael and lori will have that brawl at the very end of the movie and there's going to be a definitive winner and whatever emotional turmoil i imagine will be depicted through jamie lee curtis might also make this a little bit more impactful than what we've seen in the past so we'll see what happens there with that but going into the black phone 2 the black phone 2 is something that apparently is getting a lot of discussions and there's conversations about it uh scott derrickson told this to comic book recently he said that there's a lot of conversation a lot of pressure being put on it he said i mean the movie cost 18 million dollars 18 million dollars and it's going to ultimately make 160 170 million worldwide so they want another one of course they do he also went on to say this a few months back. Joe Hill pitched me a wonderful idea for a sequel to The Black Phone that if this movie does well, I'm going to do it. He's got a great idea. I really liked it. And as far as The Black Phone 2, I know some of you out there who are fans of that movie that came out a few months ago at this point, a couple months ago. The movie itself was very good. Uh, the supernatural aspect, again, that's something that was a little hit or miss with people. One thing that was a big, big fact or big hit across the board was the fact that Ethan Hawke is very terrifying as the grabber. Now, if they do a prequel, that's the only way I see Ethan Hawke coming back. But of course, given this has some supernatural edges to it, not edges, it is in fact, so, so it has supernatural elements to it. You could throw in maybe a spiritual type of recreation of ethan hawks the grabber stalking finney and his sister or maybe even i've seen people speculate that maybe finney grew up to be something like the grabber which is a little bit disturbing uh but i know some people would love to see a prequel movie with the grabber back in the lead role focusing on him a bit more diving into some other crimes he's committed if that wasn't if that wasn't the only town that he did this in you know going into a different town seeing his life with his brother and learning more about this villain because it was a little vague about his upbringing and who he was in the first movie even though that did make him a little bit more scarier so we'll see ultimately what happens with the black phone too but apparently there's already a lot of conversations about it because again it was a hit so Diving into Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th we know might have some big movie news coming out by the end of the year, according to Roy Lee. Uh, I do think that they have a chance here though, and this is just again a theory of mine at this section of the video, to explore Jason Voorhees' childhood. And that can be done by introducing the character who was supposed to be introduced, I think, on not one but several different occasions in the past. I've talked about this already. Introducing his father, who I think is named Elias. Elias, from what I recall, was someone who was very abusive. This could tie into why Jason is how he is as a killer. Uh, as, as far as like how brutal he is, it could all stem from stuff he witnessed at home as a kid related to any domestic disputes between Elias and his mother, Pamela. You could even, how you bring this in, you could tweak it in ways if you go with the full reboot route jason could have drowned at the summer camp and then elias could have killed pamela at home that same night but jason we know survived he lived out in the woods and you could say he lived in the woods out of fear of going home to elias because he saw elias kill his mother and that could be something that sparks 
or starts up a narrative in this reboot if they go that route that we potentially might get where jason and his father are the two that are dominant not jason and pamela pamela would have died in this new reiteration and i think honestly going in a sympathetic route with jason is something that more people would be okay with because there's already been these ingredients there for him to have a more sympathetic role and exploring the fact that this villain himself is actually also a victim and you could introduce his father elias and explore that dynamic a little bit more because that's a character who was supposed to be introduced not once again but i think on several different occasions and he's never been introduced and i think they should do that now and dive it dive a little bit more into the upbringing of jason and why he is the way he is and how that impacts how he is now so going into spiral not spiral but saw x shout out to you vink 360 if you're listening to this video i know uh this is the reddit user i've been talking about on this channel more frequently as well now but this is again like the person people go to on the saw subreddit or seems to have like a reputation for being reliable they made a post recently about why saw x might be something that hopefully lives up to expectations that people have for the previous saw movies because this movie apparently has been in development in some capacity since 2018 now originally i guess they were going to put out this jigsaw centric prequel but then chris rock had expressed his idea of wanting to do a saw movie that came together rather quickly and then we got the movie we got last year that was ultimately supposed to also be out in 2020 so with that rush scenario going on not only there but then with other subsequent previous past saw movies that's why the quality has started to be a decline for a lot of people because of the fact that they're always rushed but with jigs but with saw x it seems like this is something they've known they wanted to do for many years so hopefully that then translates into one of the better saw movies that we've gotten in recent memory again i'm hoping for something more along the lines of saw one and saw two and i'll even link to this thread so you get a better idea of what vink is referring to and as far as like what the twist could be finding out that jigsaw was an apprentice himself would be the big twist but you guys can let me know what you guys think about that down in the comment section below would you like to find out that as a twist that john kramer himself learned from the real jigsaw if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications never miss a video in the description i'll have links to my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video